We're good. Hi. I'm Donna Balzer, and I have good news and I have bad news. I'm a gardener. That's pretty good news. And I'm the author of the No, well, not No Gods. This is the Three Year Gardener Gratitude Journal. So the good news is I am back from Europe. I was stuck longer. Well, Yay! Who cares that you're stuck? It's so fabulous there. But I was thinking I might not make it here on time. I did make it here on time. In fact, I've been up since 4 a.m. But just minutes ago, my guest on Facebook, Lisa Steele, lost all power and can connect with us now. Luckily, I have Ian here. He's come down to join me. There's his I'm hand. down. Hi, Ian. But we've lost Lisa. And if you've been following along all of our little all of our little prompts, all of our little guides, Lisa is a fifth, five, five, five generation uh, chicken keeper. And she has a fabulous new book called 101 Chicken Keeping Hacks. And we wanted to give this book away today. And I had just loads of questions lined up to ask Lisa. But she's not here. She has a power outage. So she can't join us electronically. Isn't that? It's amazing. It's like it's we have awesome questions. Can chickens feel empathy? Are they <laughs> beneficial in the garden like bugs? I didn't care that at all. All I cared about was can we use our bark chips for our chickens? I had lots of questions. Are like their that. ears, do their ears determine the color of their eggs? That's a true question. Is and it? It's, well, she, yes, it is. A true question. It is. Uh, somebody has posed that question for us. Wow. And um, the truth of the matter is um, we don't know. <laughs> and we've got no one to ask. We need Lisa. Anyway, we we are also going to make the draw today. I've got all kinds of people that have um, entered the draw. Because we're not doing it today, though. We're not going to do the draw today. No, no. We're waiting until next. Well, you need to tell everyone we're rescheduling till ah, next week. So anyone that has responded on my through my webpage, you get, if you've signed up for my webpage, DonnaBalzer.com, you get a newsletter about once a month. I sent that out last week, hoping that I would get all these entries for this fabulous book, which is Lisa's book, 101 Chicken Keeping, Keeping Hacks. And thanks, by the way, to everybody. We've got hundreds of entries. We appreciate it. <laughs> anyway, we can't give it away now, Ian says, because we have to wait till next week. We'll give it away next week. We want to, again, thank everybody for being patient with us. But honestly, we didn't predict that Lisa wouldn't be here, and I'm sure she didn't either. So, uh are you kidding me? A storm's a storm. A what storm's can you do? A storm's a storm. She probably conjured up the storm just so that we wouldn't have to do this. Oh, no. <laughs> no I, I've been was, on her site. She's great. Lisa was very excited about joining us, and she was very excited about this Facebook Live. So we're going to go to gardening questions. If you have gardening questions, we can answer answer those. We certainly, I certainly can't answer chicken gardening questions. I can answer just gardening questions. So I was going to introduce myself and then introduce Lisa, but now... Lisa is not here, so I'll just introduce myself. I'm Donna. I am the author of the Gardener's Gratitude Journal. I'm here with my dog, Corley, who is licking. Thank you, Corley. Licking. licking Ian. I think she thinks he's having a muffin or something, and she's really interested in Ian. Keith, you might have to. We also have Keith here. He might have to take Corley out of the room for a minute. Okay, I've <laughs> given Corley a little bit of muffin. Now you've got to go, but I feel like I'm probably creating a problem. You're probably creating a problem. Yes. Okay, anyways. Now, you know what? This summer we were talking about gardening. We were talking about deer in the garden. Yeah, are you joking? <laughs> I'm. This is. They're in my garden right now. They're there. Really? Yes. Oh dear. It's terrible. And I love the deer, but you know what? It's got to end. They're eating all the things. Ian and I tried California lilacs. I never thought they would eat that, but no, they do. And they're on everyone's everyone's street corner. I know. Anyway, I was so shocked when I read in Lisa's book that you can mix up, you know, eggs. And milk and make your own spray and i thought that's why that spray that you can buy commercially smells so bad so we'll ask her about that next week no. let's forget about that for now we'll see if anyone at all has a just a gardening question sorry this is a whole turnaround now we will not be talking about eggs and deer or anything like that or even i had like 20 questions lined up for her so well i have got tons of questions for you we'll so forget about lisa so, we'll go right know, to us let's go to you so everyone knows that Donna's just been to Germany. Donna went with Keith, mm. and you guys, tell us a little bit about your trip. Where did you go? Mm, it was amazing. We went right uh, through Iceland, which I've never been to before, and we will probably go back, except that apparently they have crazy weather there, and they canceled our <laughs> return home trip. So we almost had to it's stay. It's everywhere, crazy it's weather. It's everywhere, I know. Not just in Maine, it was in Iceland as well. So we had to stay a bit longer, which was fun. But to tell you, get right back to it, we flew into... Uh, Kale, not Kalen, but we flew right into 
uh, Schiphol, which is in Amsterdam, or Keith, as Keith says, Schiphol. Do you say Schiphol? I say Schiphol. Schiphol. Okay, Keith says that too. So it's probably really the true way to say it. Then we took trains, and I love trains. We took trains and trams and all kinds of things uh, all around. So we started on the on the edge of Germany, and then took a train ride through to Berlin, and then up to see some cousins in the North part, and then and then back home. A little stop in Brussels, so very fun. And you lost your purse in Cologne. I did. So I said to Keith, "You're gonna have to pay for everything." And he said, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to cancel my my Mastercard, which I've been getting orders for the Gardener's Gratitude Journal. For of course, because I was away, I was getting orders. My neighbor was looking after that, and Amazon said we can't even deposit the money into your account because the um, the card you gave us mm -hmm. isn't doesn't apply anymore because of course I left my purse in Cologne. That was my fault. That's too anyway. bad. But you got it back. <laughs> I got it back. And a little bit of money, a little bit of just the Canadian money that was in it. They didn't mm -hmm. want that. They kept the euros. Anyway, the point I is, got it back, but my Visa card does not work. But if you want to order a book on Amazon, you just go ahead. It'll eventually all work out, and we're still able to mail out books, so that's fine. So we ended up in Berlin, which I loved. And everyone kept saying, the weather's not usually like this in November in Berlin. And I was thinking, I know, most people don't travel in November, but because, you know, I'm a gardener and didn't want to travel. In well, what was summer. the weather like? Fantastic. We had oh. days of we had a couple days where there was some drizzle, and mostly it was just nice. It was just really nice. Yeah. I went. Uh, I really wanted to see that Princess's Garden. It's a community garden. There's so many S's. There's like eight or nine or ten S's in it. Princess's Garden, which is a community garden in in Berlin. And as soon as we figured out the trains, we realized it was only like a stop away from the hotel we were staying at. So we we went there. And even though it's said online that the garden was closed in the winter and there's nothing to see, just almost like, just don't come here. There's nothing to see. We went there and there was people sitting around the table. Yeah. And of course, you know how I am. I'm like, hmm, <laughs> they look like they're learning something about this garden. And then I walked in closer and guess what? They're all speaking Russian. Oh, yes. <laughs> Which didn't help me at all. But then the main guy in the middle, Robert, who was one of the founders of the Princesses Garden. I, sorry, I, I can't pronounce it with all those. Princesses and Garden, which is in Berlin. It's a community garden. He was there speaking to community gardeners from Russia with, a, with an interpreter. So he said everything in English. And mm -hmm. she interpreted it. I taped it all on my iPhone. And then, of course, my iPhone, the battery went dead, so I lost everything that I taped. <laughs> <Jesus>. <laughs> but the bottom line is they are creating their own soil. They're using just soil. They're getting in bark chips, which we had just talked about the week before on my show. And it was really fun. And so we got a really great description, and it was so fun to see this. I was wearing my purple coat. You can As you can imagine, everyone from Russia was wearing their gray coat. So there you go in the pictures. Uh, one lady offered to take my picture. I think she thought I was a celebrity or part of the group, you know, because <laughs> I was just, I just came in and sat down. Anyway, it was really fun. And they're growing, their entire garden is being grown in milk cartons. So these are the square milk cartons that are, you know, that you can get milk delivered in, jugs of milk. But uh, that's what they're growing the entire garden in. And they can pick up that garden and move in a minute. And apparently, it's just a really cool community garden. They have a, a food service area. They have a little cafe. And they actually thought they could make money to pay staff by growing carrots. Oh, that's, that's really cool. Oh, it is cool. But they figured out. No, because this is what all far farmers eventually figure out. They make 0.1% of their total income off carrot sales. Oh, wow. <laughs> Most of the money comes Union. from the cafe. Oh, I see. So none of the money really comes from the vegetables. Anyways, it was just so much fun for me and really loved it. We also went to the zoo. We also went well, to the zoo. Well, I want you to hold on to that for, mm -hmm. for a second. Just to say uh, hello, big hello to Margo. Oh, Margo. Uh, Margo's out there. She says, I see your Christmas cactus yes. is blooming. We have one blooming too, but it's downstairs and are wondering if there's any way we can move it up to the main floor without it losing its blossoms. Ah. So Margo's worried about moving it. Would it lose its blossoms? It probably will. But you'll see, Margo, that I've got um, some just coming. And this happened while I was away. That's why I moved it over. Well, actually, I just moved it myself. It was on this higher shelf, and I just moved it down. The thing with Christmas cactus is they aren't supposed to be moved because then you get a change in um, – and just even if you change how they look and, and the direction they're facing, so you're not supposed to move them. But if they're fully out like this, I probably wouldn't. But if you've got, like, I've still got lots of bugs. You can see there's probably 
150 buds still coming. So you'll lose a few, but I would, I would move it because what's the point of, I mean, it's like, if you hear a tree fall in the forest, just did it really fall? Like if you have, yes, it say, did. <laughs> if you say you have a Christmas cactus blooming in your basement, do you really have it? So I would go ahead and move it. I think we're, we're just getting started with that season now. So it should be okay. Okay. Sorry. I didn't uh, apologize for interrupting, but I do want to get to Margo. Uh, mm -hmm. Just back to this. I want to know, so is community gardening big, is community gardening big in Germany? Because we all know that they're sort of an eco country and they're really sustainable. Mm -hmm. Are they big on community gardens? Doesn't seem so, no. That's crazy. In fact, they started this garden, as Robert explained to us, in an area that was economic. It's a part of Berlin that was pretty shabby. Right. And so it was actually city-owned land, and they wanted to, the city wanted to eventually sell all the land, but nobody would buy the land. So they said, yeah, yeah, you can use this piece of land here just temporarily. And that's why it's all in milk cartons, because oh, wow. it's just on a paved area, so there's really no soil. And then, of course, within three, four years of them starting this garden, they started to get media and press, and people came down to visit them, and they started to have this little cafe opened up. And now there's, I think he said, although I lost the tape, 60,000 visitors a year. It's oh, incredible. Wow. Um, so, so, so to a community garden, and usually you don't have people visiting a community garden, but because they created this whole atmosphere around it. So I don't think it's a huge thing, actually, in Berlin, but this one garden is massive. And so now, of course, the land is very valuable and people want to buy the land, which is kind of ridiculous. This always happens. Right? Yeah, the, of um, course, of course. Yeah, the gentrification. Anyway, they were in the, probably the worst part of Berlin, but now it's actually it's just two stops from where we were staying, which is the old East Germany. Oh, it was so much fun. Anyway. Hey, so, yeah, no, so you mentioned the cafe there. Is that where, because I saw you posting online, you guys had breakfast or dinner or somewhere inside an enormous greenhouse. Is that the cafe? No. Is that that's that was after our flight home got cancelled when the weather turned bad in in Iceland our, our flight got cancelled so they gave us even though really acts of God like weather are never covered if you're if your flight's cancelled but they gave us a hotel the NH hotel so big shout out to the NH hotel which was just free for us overnight they put us in the NH and they said breakfast will be in the greenhouse and I was thinking in the greenhouse what's the sure. NH by the way that's the name of the hotel oh that's the letter cool. and I said to Keith it must be an acronym for something that nobody yeah. and then we started asking the guy about it and he says oh you can get points you can collect points around the world i'm like i have honestly never heard of this hotel before but it's it's but it must be because the 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 greenhouse is enormous I it must know. have cost a mint it must have cost a fortune and, and did what, they actually have things growing in the no, greenhouse well they did there were live plants lots of live plants but they were all um in pots all the plants were in pots. It was so nicely organized. It was oh my all god! Do you tell me it's the waste of a good greenhouse? I know <laughs> it is sort of. But it was. They were saying, and I, I took a whole video of the whole video that they had there about the greenhouse because it's an, um, a courtyard shaped sort of old style hotel. It just had a big empty hole in the middle, and so what ended up happening is that they built the greenhouse in there, which is not a great spot to put a greenhouse, but it actually helped shade it a little bit. Mm -hmm. and, and so they just put these racks and racks and racks, like the kind of racks that you would move plants around if you were a commercial greenhouse person. Oh, yeah. They put plants on them and they were all in pots so they can move them out again. Wow. What was the quality of the plant like? Were they, they were good? beautiful. Yeah. So they're really healthy inside tropical there. Tropical plants, really nice. Keith said, oh, it'd be way too hot here in the summer. And I'm like, I don't think so. It is Holland. I don't think it's really that hot. So it wasn't hot in there at the time? No. It's just perfect. It's just because it's an enormous structure. I couldn't believe it. Like you've yeah. got quite a big uh, greenhouse, but it's like yeah. ten times the size. No, they said it. it would hold three hundred and fifty people during oh. a reception or a party. I love that idea. We should. We need to do that sometime yeah. with BC greenhouses. We need to talk to Angela <laughs> and say we want to do an event in an enormous greenhouse. Yeah, I think that would be really cool. Yeah, that would be really fun, wouldn't it? Yes, Apparently, it would. They have one up in um, not uh, Courtney, but Campbell River, the town just up from. Courtney, they have a really great, huge um, BC greenhouse. Oh, oh, really? On top of a senior center, and they're going to be building one here too, as well. So, oh yeah, I, that, that's a really interesting point that you're making because there's a uh, Berwick is beginning in Parksville, isn't it, or Qualicum no, or Qual both? Qualicum Beach. And they are having a designated greenhouse, right? Yeah. Yeah. Tell us about that a bit, because I think that's really cool. Well, I saw the designs. And, of course, you didn't know this. You can do a custom design greenhouse if you're interested. You don't have to, you know, just order off the catalog, so to speak. You can do a custom design. And Berwick is a senior's residence that's just being built. And they have ordered a greenhouse for the roof of the building. 
And when I was there visiting BC Greenhouse about a month ago now, they were showing me the designs, the custom designs that they were doing. And what they actually do is um, create it completely from scratch. And then they build it at their warehouse there in BC. They build it to make sure all the little pieces go together because it's a special one-off. Mm -hmm. And then they take it all apart again, box it up and ship it out. So it should be coming in 2019 so i hope to be there when they're putting it up and, and maybe videoing it and seeing seeing how it goes do you know if it's a bc greenhouse yeah. that they're putting yeah, out? It, oh, is. it is sorry that's why when did I you just say that uh, yeah <laughs> Ian, i'm vaguely attention? listening i'm <laughs> vaguely listening so yeah so when i was there visiting them in langley uh they were showing me the designs they'd come up with on the computer and then they were also uh, showing me how they put it together, customized, and then build it completely, take it apart and ship it. So it's going to be exciting to see in real life. Like I said, they've got one up at Campbell River already on a senior's residence. That one's won some awards already. So we'll see. We'll see if we'll, if they'll let us host a big event there or not. That would be oh, fun. I do. It would be fun. But I just like the idea that like it's a perfect it's a perfect pastime for people who are yeah. um, elderly, for example, mm -hmm. who want to have something that's low impact, but meaningful and that can nourish them and mm -hmm. that can give them a sense of purpose. I think it's fantastic. Yeah. I mean, I just went to um, the Kiwanis uh, village in Nanaimo, in Nanaimo and it's really nice and everything, mm -hmm. but they don't have a greenhouse. And I was telling yeah. them, you guys need a greenhouse mm -hmm. because there's a lot of green thumbs in there and there's a lot of people who are still quite capable of doing things. That's and um, They might move to a senior's facility, but they might not be like just like bedridden or anything. Yeah, the and they don't need to do bingo every day. Yeah. You know what? It's like you can nurture something, you can grow it. I mean, this summer I grew a tomato, some of those red racer tomatoes mm -hmm. that you gave me the first time, and I loved it. And I'm yeah. not, you know, everyone knows me. I'm not a green thumb. I'm not really a gardener, but I loved it. Yeah. So I just think to that, be able to produce something. Yes, just it's to be able to produce something and, and that, eat it too. I ate the fruits oh, of you? my labor. Oh, yes, and I'm not. I, so I loved nice. it. I really did. I think it's amazing. And anyway, I thought that was a great idea. Yeah. Well, um, I do think generally back to the community garden thing. Just yeah. not to get too far because actually the seniors greenhouse idea is a form of a community garden. That's a good point. In <laughs> Banff, they actually have two greenhouses that they've had built from BC Greenhouse that they use a greenhouse as the community garden instead of people usually visualize something in the ground, maybe a. I always call them the little gravestone areas. People get their little plot. But uh, <laughs> in, in Banff, they're using a greenhouse just because they need that longer season. Oh, that's fine. And in Berlin, they were using these milk cartons to build. Again, they had no soil, so they were just building their own soil from scratch. So there's so many different ways. And that's why these Russians were touring. I was trying to get a feel for it because obviously they don't speak Russian. Why are these people here? Mm. They were visiting a series of community gardens outside of Russia, so not just Berlin. They were visiting several countries to see what people are doing for community gardens. So if you are growing in a community garden, let us know. I'd love to hear how your garden's going. Yeah, I think that's really, it's really interesting. Like a, I grew up in England, a lot of people have, there's a lot of community gardens. You know, it's the, a right, you, you're allowed to have a community garden. You have, they have to allot yes. you a community allotment, which I think, and you're allowed to have chickens on some of those community allotments. Not that we're doing chickens today, because Lisa Steele can't be here because of a storm out east, even after all this all this time that we've spent hoping that she'll be here with us today. We are not doing it, but some community gardens have chickens, some gardens are... Yeah, well, we, we'll find out more about it next week when we talk mm -hmm. to her. Mm -hmm. um, I want to say a big hello to Kirsten Kringhau Crouch. Oh, and, yes, Kristen. And Hi. Kristen says, would love a new greenhouse. Sarah's is 20 years old. Got any suggestions for Kristen? What a what she should be <laughs> looking for? I mean, you've got a you've got two greenhouses. Well, Kristen, if yours is only 20 years old, it's probably fine. In fact, the ones I have are guaranteed for life. They're never, they never break. But you know what the truth is? A lot of people build, and I think Kristen joined us a couple of weeks ago. And she was saying that, um, I think she's built hers out of wood. And oh, it yeah. eventually starts to rot. It starts to, you know, the termites and the humidity and it starts to expand and contract. So I think that's what you did, Kristen. But luckily mine's made out of aluminum. And that big one that I saw at the, green, at the greenhouse breakfast area at the hotel. And see, if I hadn't had a canceled flight, I wouldn't have seen that. Did you take any video or any more pictures? Because I've seen one picture of you in front of it. Yes, I took quite a bit of picture. Oh, good, because we could post that <laughs> in this link. In we this he doesn't realize I just got home last oh, night. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, that's true, you did. 
I could have posted more. I'm sorry. He's I'm like, so I'm already, sorry. It's, it's like, a... I've, already called, you know, I've already called the shuttle. We have to leave. I'm like, I'm videoing this, Keith. That is true. You did really well. You were in Germany, did two posts, at least two posts, uh, yeah. to, you know, specifically for this broadcast. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You are amazing. I love you. I do. I do. Anyways, Kristen, I hope when you get your new one, I know you were saying, oh, yours is eight foot by 20 feet. But needs a new base. Oh, okay. Oh, the it's land is shifting. shifting. Yeah. You know what? We, my first greenhouse, I had it on. Uh, we thought it was fantastic. Keith put it on a lovely um, wooden, in those days we used treated wood. Sorry, we did that. <laughs> but it even started to rot and shift. So this new greenhouse, which we've got, which is 16 by 20. Now, just FYI for people that are watching today, I've actually never met Kristen. We've just talked online. But I'm always saying to her, you've got to come over and visit me. We've got to go through this. So again, come so, on So over. Kirsten's is about as long as yours, 20. but it's narrower. Is that right? Yes. And the land is shifting. So this time, when we built our 16 by 20, we actually poured a concrete base and we did that because we wanted it to be a little higher. If you buy a greenhouse that's this high and you put it on a base that says, I just gives you that extra headroom. And so that's what we did. We just made a bigger foundation and we did it out of concrete this time. We didn't pour a concrete base though. We just poured a concrete wall. What do they call it? Sub, sub wall, stub wall, stub wall. Uh, so I hope you can do that for your new one. And I hope you have room for that. There she is again. Oh, and the roof keeps shifting, which is not good for the vents. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's really tough. Hmm. Well, Kristen, I, I hope you are able to get a new greenhouse. I also saw that Kristen's getting married next year or doing a wedding. Maybe you're not getting married. Maybe your daughter is. <laughs> you know, this is the trouble with Facebook. We're not actually directly communicating. We're just hearing about things. And uh, I think you're, you're going to have a big year there next year. Oh, that's good. Um, Kristen, we're going to be talking chickens in the garden next week. So if you've got any questions, and the same with you, Margo, if you're still listening, uh, we're interested in getting chicken questions. We've got quite a few, but if you want to... Margo's on a farm. She probably oh. has a thousand... Well, maybe not. I'm just guessing that you probably have room for a lot of chickens. But I think in most towns now, people are able to have a few. Uh, I know sometimes, you know, not every city allows it, but some of them are doing trials. And they can have three chickens or four. And this is even happening in Toronto because my friend and colleague Stephen Biggs has a chicken bylaw coming in, hopefully in, in Toronto. And they've been doing some trials. So th th this is happening. I mean, Lisa Steele, who was going to be our guest today, is um, actually not here. But she's, uh, she's, she's on farm in Maine. So she has more space. So if you've got space... You can probably do it, no problem. But I okay, just have to read. By the way, Chris, well, questions. Kristen says that you, they are not allowed to have chickens, actually. And it was her oh. daughter who's getting married. Oh, it's her daughter that's getting. Well, that's exciting. Too. You did know. You did mention that. You did say that. I it said might, might be. be her daughter. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think that's really cute. Cool. Okay. What do you What do you want to talk about there? Well, I just wanted to say something about some of the kinds of tips that are in this book. If you've um, <laughs> you listened to me before, you've seen me talk about straw bale gardening. Oh, wow. So Lisa actually just puts an old window pane on top of the same straw bales that you might use to just grow in, and that just makes a little bit of a cold frame. And so the reason I'm bringing that up. Yeah, what do you grow in there? Well, it's just a cold frame. Ian. What does so that cold mean? cold frame just means it keeps the, the straw would just keep the area warmer, and then you could put some plants that are in pots, like to get them through an early season when it might be chilled. Might be a bit cold. Oh, that's a winter's tactic. So it's a winter tactic. Okay. But that the reason I'm bringing it up is because I just found out I'm speaking, and I'm for <laughs> sure excited about that, at the Victoria CD Saturdays. So I threw this out in my email last time to everyone. I was saying to you, listeners, if you are looking for great speakers, you know I'm going to be a great speaker, and Victoria has just <laughs> acknowledged that. And they've got me coming down to talk about greenhouses. So I'm going to use this tip because they don't want to know just about big fancy greenhouses like Kristen has eight by 20. I have 16 by 20. They don't want to know just about that. They want all the little tips. And I know Kristen's done some interesting things. So we will get together before I have to speak in Victoria. And I think Kristen's a speaker as well. I think you're down speaking is it in Seattle this year. That's going to be pretty exciting. So. You've spoken down there too, haven't you? Yeah, I try to go every second year. So this is my non-year for sp i spoke in 2018 and so 2019 i won't be speaking in and who was that for who are you it's the northwest flower and garden show and you were sponsored by somebody see greenhouses yes mm -hmm. they sent you down there yeah it's that them. was really great okay. and also easy easy living perennials they were sponsors too oh yes that's right yeah, it's true so that's that right really fun. blooming easy that's awesome we love those guys 
Yes, uh, Kristen, uh, Kristen's saying it's in Seattle. Look. Mm -hmm. Are you speaking there this year, Kristen? This is kind of a funny way to have a conversation. <laughs> no, this is exactly how the future of communication is going to be. I speak and then she... Uh, Everybody she answers you on Facebook Live. Yeah, there for sure. Go. So I don't see a lot of questions coming in. I see hopefully Margot got the answer to her question. No, and time is up. I think our time is almost up. Well, so Say hello I'm to back. Nancy first, though. Oh, Nancy. And we almost... Oh, I will miss Victoria where I grew up. My dad was a green thumber. Do you know Nancy? Well, no, I don't. So hello, Nancy. Thanks for joining us. Um, make sure uh, it's on February 16th. So that's a long ways away. So if you haven't set your travel plans, come on down to Victoria. And I'm still signing up for talks. I'm, I would love to go and do a CD Saturday in Edmonton. And I know it's on Sunday in Edmonton. And I just had an email while I was away about speaking in Grand Prairie. So if you've got okay. this idea on your mind, we should get Donna Balzer out to speak. Yes, you should. Of course you should. So make sure to send me an email. <laughs> Shameless uh, self-promoting. Self -promoting. Self -promoting. <laughs> it's like it's terrible, but I like it. Yeah, well, we, we wanted Lisa. We couldn't get her, so we got more of Donna. Anyway, we Actually, are... we could also, yeah, just hang on. Look, uh, where did Kirsten, somebody said, what did Kirsten just say? Oh, Margo said she has 40 chickens, but they're not all ours. Yeah. Oh, that's what Kristen says. She said, "I'm planting seeds. Uh, pl I'm planting seeds demo and talking veggie gardening. That's what she's doing oh, so in Seattle." So. Oh, okay. Well, Kristen and I. It's a planting actually... seed demo. What's that? Oh, you're going to demonstrate how to plant seeds. We did a we did a little jobs in the garden. That was our first one. Do you remember? Yeah. We were. You were separating so out the great. seeds and we were planting we were cleaning them. Cleaning seeds. Cleaning seeds. Oh yeah. Different from yeah, planting yeah, seeds. Okay, okay. Anyway, Ian has got some new equipment, so we're going to be able to do even do. better little jobs in the garden this coming year. We're, we're going to have awesome sound. We're going to have awesome sound, and we're going to have a fun time together, and we're going to keep them always short. We yeah. always think the beauty of, of this, I mean, we've gone on a bit long today because I've been yapping on about my trip to Berlin. But um, actually, you know, basically people like one or two minute segments. And that's what we try to do in the little jobs in the garden. And we're trying to get them all posted on Facebook or yeah. on FaceTime. No, Wait, no Facebook. We're, we're, we're putting them on. Well, putting they them on YouTube. Actually. Yeah, we're putting them on YouTube. Any other questions? Before well, we just Kristen says that she's, yes, she is doing a seed demo. And Nancy's actually in Medicine Hat Look in the Riverside area. Do you oh, know where that is? Oh, yes. I know exactly where that is. I often speak. I was just looking at my little journal today and I often speak in medicine hat, but I haven't been there for two years. So it's incredible. I love that Riverside area because it's so, um, it's so mild. So she can only drive. Yeah. Only drive. No problem. February. So you do. Yeah. Margo's got the chicken thing, but mm -hmm. uh, Margo, you've got to come and talk to us ne next week about chickens. Look yeah, at this. They get their advice. percentage of chickens every week, pay their percentage of the cost. Actually, you know what? Here we go. I'm going to put it on the screen so that everybody can see it. How about that? You can put that on the screen. I can, but usually I don't because, look, you're totally blocked. Oh, well, that's okay. <laughs> but you get the idea. Anyway, Margo knows a little about chickens and a little about eggs, so it looks it. She says, bonus for us is everyone has agreed to do chores when we go away. So, oh, it looks like they're going away too. That's perfect. Margo, thanks very much for the info. Anyway, you can see Margo's comment on the post. So I guess we didn't need Lisa Steele at all. We could have just talked to Margo. But Lisa, of course, has the book, so Margo can chip in when she comes back next week. Okay, so if you're not away. that's a good point. So let's promo the chicken so, party next week. Next week, chicken party back here. We're chicken we'll, mad part, chicken madness, chicken madness. We'll try <laughs> to get Lisa on next week for sure. And if you've already uh, seen the call for, um, obviously everyone here today, their name will be entered. Uh, well, wait a minute, it won't necessarily be entered. So send me a what do they call that private message if you yes. have your name entered to win this book. And probably Margo doesn't need it, but maybe Nancy wants it. And Kristen's okay. not allowed to have chickens, but maybe she wants it for her new her daughter. So if you, <laughs> want, if you want the book, and I've already got, like I said, my for my newsletter, I've already got some names in the draw. But if you want to add your name, I did promise that we would do the draw today at 3.20, which we didn't do because now we don't have Lisa. So we're going to wait till next week. So thank you so much for joining us today. And we will see you back next week. We'll go through your questions in case we missed any and try to answer those. And have a fun week. Talk to you soon. I'm Donna Balzer. Welcome back, Dee. Thank you.